I'm 23. I can take care of myself. Hey, dog. You all right? No, my, my tire popped across the street. Yeah, I figure so. Um, the guy in the green shirt down there is a pretty good mechanic. Here. I don't have much, sorry, but please take this. I don't need that. No, come on, take it. I don't want that. I've got money. I'm not poor. Mr. Michael J. Connor, the jury has found you guilty on aggravated sexual assault charges. You will be punished by imprisonment to 20 years with the possibility of parole after 10 years. The doctor just called. You are pregnant. Well, you don't need to tell me you're gonna have it. It's not an it, Dad, it's a baby. Why are you here? a lot I cried <laughs> because we both did we, we cried like actually during watching the film I started sharing tears you know I, I was really impacted by the message fue un mensaje muy claro un mensaje yo creo que de actualidad eh, y mira sobre todas las cosas lo más que me llamó la atención fue que habla de perdón del señor que no importa lo que tú puedas haber hecho no hay nada más alto que el perdón de él realmente eso me llamó mucho la atención y la manera en que la película lo proyecta yo creo que es fascinante y el mensaje que lleva a los jóvenes es excelente yo creo que fue muy buena me encantó de veras Great question. It's something we think about all the time and continue to think about. Um, we think that the realism of the circumstance, the realism of the jail scenes, the realism of, of the fights and the kind of, you know, double dealing and all the deals that take place kind of provide a lot of that realism. The sets were real and the actors really performed well, which brought out the realism. But the only thing that we really cut from the first public showing of this at the Sarasota Film Festival were, were really just the foul language. That, that was in the film. And it wasn't that overt. There were a few bad words that we felt like potentially could alienate some of our core audience. And rather than risk that, we thought, okay, let's take a look at what the film would look like, you know, with, with some of those small lines or small words out of the film. And to us, the, it still resonated, and we reduced and mitigated the risk of alienating our core audience. So um, that's something we obviously thought about a lot. And if you saw the original script to what's on the screen today, it's changed a lot. And, um, but the first, you know, the showing of it publicly, it um, really, the only changes were really the language. This movie touched my heart. Um, before, I had my opinion about abortion. I thought that if it wasn't the case exactly how this lady in the movie, you know, you could abort your child. But after reading the word of God and me on my own, I realized that that's not right. It's a life. Amazing message for forgiveness. Amazing. It's kind of funny and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I actually identified myself with uh, the actual villain, um, the, the guy in jail. You know, I just, I just see, you know, like, if, you know, he found redemption through like, something that he never would have thought he did. And I think that a lot of people will, will appeal to that, and I appeal to it as well. It's really touching, and I think definitely it's going to change a lot of um, lives, and it's going to touch a lot of young people. We need to stand up and take charge of the, of the next generation. And as you see, I'm here with my grandbaby, my first grandbaby. I want to make a difference for this next generation. We needed a movie that can bring God's word again. I relate a lot to a lot of things that happened through the movie, and I just wish it was a little longer. <laughs> 
So I think that one of the interesting things about the way this was shot is that it captured a very real and uh, you know gritty way about the real life in uh, in prison and what can happen in someone's life. And at the same time, uh, you know, uh, the cinematography was really quite beautiful, and um, it was just a really good blend in between the two styles to capture the realism of what really can happen uh, in someone's life. It really helped with the you know how tragic the story is, and at the same time, um, just just very well captured in a very nice style. And I highly recommend it. It was a lovely film. I, I've become involved in this film because I learned early on in my walk of faith, do not try to question God. Um, but if I could have one question for him, it would be, how do you tell somebody who's been raped, you should have this baby? You know? <clears throat> and I was in a meeting with a very famous evangelist uh, named, named James Robison. He has a huge television. Uh, <clears throat> and he's the product of a rape. And I, I, I just, it's funny how God will answer the questions of your heart because I was a guest on this television program and <clears throat> in the green room prior to the interview uh, there was ten of us sitting around and my wife was there and we were talking and and literally James Robison with his wife sitting there just said you know <clears throat> and, you know James kind of talked like this you know he's got a southern accent and um, and he said, you know, and blah, blah, blah. It, it, it was incredible how casual he was. He said, you know, now me, my mother, I'm the, I'm the product of a rape. My mother was raped and I was born. And, I, and I'll just never forget that moment. It was such a confirmation. Because millions have come to Christ through James Robbins. We can say in our philosophy uh, oh you know the Lord works in mysterious ways but he really works in mysterious ways that we will never understand yeah so for me it's fascinating because now when I when I witness to other people oh thank you when I when I share the gospel uh, I get to actually literally look somebody in their in their eyes and say every time a sperm hits an egg it's a miracle. God it's not some act of you know genetics or physi physiology or you know uh science. It's not yeah, it's it's and and in this world m you know millions are born every day. But that's how big God is. Amen. You know? You it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. you okay, here's my answer. Uh, <clears throat> and it's not a very nice one. Um, first of all, the Lord is in control. And there is a lot more Christians out there in the media, in the secular media, than we realize. Doing his work his way. Early on in my walk with the Lord, I was extremely, I, I suffered extremely from holy discontent. And, um, <clears throat> uh, but, I think it's it's a timing issue, you know. God's going to do what he's going to do his way with or without us. <laughs> um, so I'm just glad to be on the right team, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but at the same time, within uh, a lot of the exposure that I've had to the Christian media, uh, 
I mean, I've been in certain situations where the Christians involved in projects that I had been working on or conferences or conventions or award shows that I had been at were so much more like Hollywood than the 20 years I've been in Hollywood. <clears throat> so I, I think the key is discernment and hearing from the Lord. That's the key, you know. It, you know, th and I want to be careful because I don't want to say anything that could be offensive, you know, but everything is, is defined in God's word, period. And I think that there's a lot of people that are Christians that, that have convinced themselves they're doing certain movies for God and they're not. <laughs> um, and, and that's okay because he's in control and, and so on and so forth. But um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting time. Uh, the film industry on both sides of the equation needs a lot of prayer. Um, but uh, I think my answer specifically to your question is it's, it's a mix of both. It's really, truly a mix of both. Um, but I think what's going to be cool uh, in the next, <clears throat> you know, seven to ten years is you will see radical conversions to faith by people that you would never have expected. I mean, big time celebrities and big time directors and big time, you know, major movers and shakers in Hollywood are just going to fall right on their faces for the Lord. It's, that time is coming, I believe. La película fue estupenda. Yo no sé si yo hubiese tomado una decisión como esa tan fuerte, pero fue increíble, absolutamente increíble. Muy buena, de buena calidad. Definitivo, la parte que ella decidió visitar en la prisión, me parece que esa fue la parte más impresionante donde nos muestra a nosotros que debemos perdonar. I liked it. It actually really showed what Christians should be about instead of trying to help for themselves and taking it all for themselves. We should go ahead and just like spread the word throughout the entire world and help people in their walk in Christ. I was just captivated by how true they, you know, it was so true the way they were able to relate the message of forgiveness and loving the bad man and just walking through that. Uh, my father was a Roman Catholic priest, um, and that's probably, um, and uh, so um, obviously I'm really involved, and I was raised, um, I was raised uh, as a Roman Catholic, you know, child, very aggressively, which made me, you know, make a movie like this, but um, just the fact that um, he, um, he had many reasons to leave, you know, um, the priesthood, and uh, but uh, but that was the most important thing. That obviously he raised me that way, and uh, and hopefully I can give back a little bit with his voice and through my work, in a way. Right. I I think. It's important, I think, the f as actors, we're storytellers, and I think the first duty of the storyteller is to tell the story. And um, from a character perspective, I'm just playing the truth of the m moment, you know, and just try to carry my moments, my trajectory, my story, and just play that with as much conviction as possible. I created through analysis a an arc for the character, and I just tried to get there as best as I could, um, just being honest to him and what I felt his journey was to, to redemption. Yeah, I felt it was a, you know, to me it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful story, you know, and that it's Christian is, that it has an altruistic cause I think is a positive thing, but, and I think it's a lesson for us to learn also, it, we, you know, it doesn't have to be a Christian film, it's a, it could be a good film with a Christian cause, you know, so um, I think that's, positive and um, yeah there was no limitation for me. Anyone I know I would, I would tell them to watch this movie. It was amazing and coming from a family that's not very religious I love this movie. It was an amazing movie. It was extremely well done and I enjoyed every part of it. I think it's a topic of the and I think many people can see it, it doesn't matter if you're not Christian. On the contrary, I think it's going to take a message very positive about what it really is. I wish my sister came and everybody came to come see it but it was very packed so we had to watch
watch it standing, but it was good. It was a really good movie. Todos deberían de ver para la familia también. Es una, es algo que deberíamos de vivir más a menudo y necesitamos más el perdón y el amor. Hemos llegado al final de este programa. Nos esperamos cada semana con más música, entrevistas y mucho más. Soy Mariel Álvarez and keep watching Vida Extrema.